All right, we are in the studio and I'm about to press go live. Start screen share. Sorry for the wait. I'm trying to get this to go live. Let me see. I wonder if I use. I'm gonna see if it's gonna let me get into the studio from both of my devices. It's not doing it. <sighs> okay, well, the go live isn't working for me right now, but we'll stick to the audio. It is recording on um, the other device that I have, so. Let me just move this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna do my little intro and um, introduce you and then please start uh, telling me all about who you are and what you do. Okay. Welcome everyone to the Break Vape Podcast. I am your host, Tammy Ernst. This is episode number 14. Today we have a very special episode. We have Bart Bright coming to us to speak about THC, which is a big consideration when it comes to vaping. So this is our guest. Please welcome him and let's go. Hi, Bart. How are you today? Hi, Sammy. Uh, Really really good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Can you tell everybody uh, who you are and what you do? Mm-hmm. And whereas alcohol uh, is water soluble, so you pee it out. So, uh, you know, so the THC stays in your brain um, for you know for quite a long time, depending on how much you use and, and how long you've been using it. So, 
Uh, he kept having what was called it, uh, as his uh, condition with THC progressed, he kept having uh, this, uh, something called cannabis induced psychosis. Oh, wow. I had never heard about that before. I think until the other day, you and I were talking, and cannabis induced psychosis is a real thing. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's in the DSM 5, it's a medical diagnosis. And um, a lot of times, doctors or parents or whoever in public think, oh, they're on meth or they're um, on PCP. And then once they uh, get in the hospital and they take their blood, uh, many times it's just very high levels of THC. Uh, and no other, many times no other drug is in their system. And so he kept having these episodes and he eventually died by suicide. Oh, I'm so um, sorry. I, yeah, I hate that for you. I know. It's, and so, of course, it was devastating. It mm. happened uh, in August of 2018. So I used to think, um, you know, marijuana, um, you know, it's harmless. I did it in college in the 1970s. Uh, I'm 66. And... Uh, unfortunately, what's happened is, in general, it was less, much less harmful because um, there was a lot less THC in marijuana uh, back then. And I'd say the last five years especially, the THC levels in the uh, marijuana has gone way up. Is and that similar to how they have started adding more and more nicotine to cigarettes and vapes on purpose? Exactly. So they're doing the same with big cannabis or, or big marijuana that they're doing with big tobacco. Exactly. You've done your homework. Yep, you're right. Um, because yeah, what they found with the tobacco companies, what they found, let's just say 100 years ago, um, they found that they added more and more nicotine to the tobacco products, the cigarettes mainly, uh, that they would get more people addicted and they make more money. Well, the big cannabis companies have done the same thing with marijuana. Um, especially again, uh, uh, people who are under 25, um, the, the brains are still developing. It's much easier to get them addicted to a substance, including THC, uh, if they you know put more and more THC in the product. Mm. And so that's what's, what's happening. And so anyway, I did a bunch of research after I uh, you know, devastated uh, and was grieving. And then when I was doing the research, I found lots of misinformation that I'll talk about, I'm sure, with you, and a lot more, of course. And I also found uh, an organization, a uh, support organization. Yes, Marinon, correct? Correct, correct. Yes, so, so can you, uh, for the listeners, can you spell Marinon for us and tell us, you know, where you're located and what Marinon does, please? Oh, sure. So Marinon is a support group. It's a 12-step uh, program. It's the marijuana so, okay. Uh, started uh, shortly after Alcoholics Anonymous started. Um, so back in the, the um, so Al- Alcoholics Anonymous started in 1935 with uh, two two people, Dr. Bob and Bill W. Anyway, then the spouses at that time it was only men, as far as I know, back then at Alcoholics Anonymous when it first started, and their spouses, their wives. They, they realized that they needed a support group too, so they started Al Anon. And then, you know, many, many years later, a group of uh, people who were addicted to marijuana started something called Marijuana Anonymous. It's in their you know, 12 step program instead of alcohol, it's marijuana. And then uh, when I found the group called Marinon, it's really spelled as M A R hyphen A-N-O-N. Okay, great. And just for everybody listening, I'll, I'll drop that in the show notes later on too. So you guys, if you want to check out Marinon, look in the show notes and we'll have a link there for you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Marinon.com. Anyway, so um, it's the marijuana equivalent of al for, for support because what's happened is so many um, family members, they will go to a family family member or a friend and they'll say, you know, my son or my husband uh, is using too much uh, you know, marijuana and the friend or where family member will say, no, no, that's medicine, that's natural, um, it's not addictive and it's all good, you know, basically. And so they don't feel any support because um, 
you know, when they see their loved one having psychosis, psychotic breaks, and even uh, other conditions that we can talk about later, um, they go, no, not, you know, they realize once they get to our marathon meetings, which are on Zoom, we have uh, nine meetings a week now on Zoom, um, then they realize, oh, I'm not alone. There's 1,200 members now. We get about one or two new members a day, and uh, they realize they're not alone. Mm. What a great cause. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so anyway, when I found it on the internet in October of 2020, uh, a woman named Brooke, uh, she was keeping the website going, but not much else was happening. It was in the middle of COVID, and I asked her if I could start Zoom meetings, and she said, yeah, that, that'd be great. So I started these Zoom meetings, and they run again like uh, Al-Anon meetings. Instead of, we, instead of us saying alcohol, we say marijuana. And um, we used Al-Anon literature, and like I say, to substitute marijuana for the word alcohol. And um, and so pretty much right away, I got a bunch of people, you know, at least a couple of people that said they, they wanted to help me. So it's a real team effort. And um, so I, again, I didn't start Marinon, but I kind of found it. And uh, after, uh, like I say, Brooke kept the website going, and, um, and then it's kind of developed from there. Yeah, quick question. So these meetings that you're hosting on Zoom for people that are battling a THC addiction, um, a lot of times, so, you know, different ways to ingest THC, you can smoke it, you can eat it. Um, yeah. When when they're coming to you for help, is, is it a free resource? And also, is it an individual meeting or a group meeting? Oh, yeah, good, good questions. So, uh, number one, it's actually for the loved ones of people who are trying to stop. Or, or, or uh, okay, so you have someone in your life that's uh, using too much marijuana. And a lot of times they are vaping. And that's, you know, we'll get into that more. But a lot of times they are vaping. And that's, um, you know, how they they get introduced to the high THC marijuana. And um, so then, or you know, like you say, they do it other ways too, but vaping is very popular because they're a way to, to consume THC. Ah, um, okay. So, yeah, so, so real quick, so Marijuana Anonymous is where people go to try to stop. Mm-hmm. Marijuana is for the loved ones of people who are either trying to stop, okay, or who aren't trying to stop. And, um, uh, so these people need support to try to help support or try to figure out how to handle. Okay, so th- so life. that's the big distinction there is one is for the people that are actually actually using and the other is for the yeah, no. family members or friends or whoever that are having their lives affected. So, the, yes, so then with the vaping, which is interesting, I mean, it's sad, but it's interesting. Um, Many people think, oh, my son or uh, you know, my, my daughter or whatever is um, vaping tea, is vaping nicotine, which we know is bad, bad enough. Mm-hmm. But many times, actually, they're vaping THC. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And they just can't smell it because it's got the flavors. It doesn't smell like a marijuana plant or smoking a joint. It's, uh, it, it's a THC oil. And um, so not only will do they have all the problems, the health problems, from the uh, you know the vaping itself, but they can have psychosis, something called CHS, and other other things. Yes, this THC containing vapes contain um, vitamin E acetate. You know, which vitamin E can be a good thing for your body, but not when you inhale it. Um, and I, I know a lot of my listeners, um, you know, have. Uh, always said when you're a vaping a THC vape it just makes you cough so much harder right it, it shreds up your lungs it, sh- it makes your body cough with such intensity um, and it, I think that it, it definitely has more um, additives and things like that and a huge concentration of THC and now big tobacco is acting like they did back when they were promoting cigarettes to young people with, you know, Joe Camel. Do you remember that guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So for my younger listeners, if you don't know who Joe Camel is, there's a brand of cigarettes called Camel. And Bart, what do you think the date was back when Joe Camel was cool? Well, so I was a kid, so I was born in 1956. So, I mean, I know it's 1966. I was 10, and, um, and we were, 
like even um, yeah, you know, he thought you know he was pretty cool. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that's when I was making in, in uh, arts and crafts class clay. I was making an ashtray for my mom. Oh um, yeah. He does pretty soon make the kind of clay. So um, you know, I didn't think anything of it. So yeah, Joe Campbell. Um, Winston tastes tastes good like a cigarette should. Some yeah. Commercial Winston cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah, so it was the 60s and 70s, so they had this cartoon character of a camel, a cartoon cam camel who rode in a, a Corvette or um, maybe not a Corvette, what do you just call it, a convertible, and had his cool sunglasses on and he's smoking. So it was just a way for them to reach a younger generation, and that's what Big Tobacco is also doing now with um, our adolescent generation right now. They're promoting these THC containing vapes, not just nicotine. I mean, they're promoting THC with fun colors and flavors and everything at a much younger age. You know, probably decades ago, if you wanted to go and get the amount of THC that you would get from a vape, from maybe finding a joint somewhere and smoking it when you're, you know, adolescents or whatever, it would take so much more effort and sources to get that amount of THC than it would than people are getting now because we have open dispensaries and things like that so you can smoke it and eat it in much greater quantities than you ever could before. Exactly because what happens too is that uh, people build up a tolerance and so to get the same high you have to use more. Mm -hmm. So you have, when you start out just like if someone starts drinking and they uh, drink a beer or two, two beers, they can get you know, somewhat drunk or tipsy. But let's say if they keep drinking, after, let's say, a month, they need three beers instead of two to feel, feel the same way, to get the same high. It's the same thing with THC. You build up a tolerance and you need more and more and more to get to that same high. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in, in Maranon, have you had people who maybe quit themselves and now they are? that family member who's being supported and have you picked up on any um, tips and tricks on how to fight addiction? Yes, um, number one, so with Marijuana Anonymous, um, you know, or some people even will go to Alcoholics Anonymous even though they're addicted to marijuana because there's a lot more meetings. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want people to, get, people to get me wrong, there's over 450 weekly meetings with Marijuana Anonymous. So if you, if you are trying to stop, um, and again, a lot of it is from people vaping marijuana, uh, then I would go, I would Google, or maybe you can put this uh, in, um, in the when we're text. In the show notes? Uh, would, yeah, Google Marijuana Anonymous, find the meeting. Mm -hmm. Marijuana Anonymous, find a meeting. And it's over 450 meetings a week. Yeah, a lot of them are on Zoom. Uh, so that would be a good place to go to uh, get support because it's almost impossible to do by yourself, to get support to try to stop something like that. If you, if you uh, don't have, if you wanna to go to an in-person meeting and there's no in-person marijuana anonymous meeting, I would definitely consider going to uh, Alcoholics Anonymous uh, because they're almost all open now and uh, accepting to people who are addicted to crunch anything. And it's you, wonderful that that accept. support is out there because I think with THC, in marijuana, there's a big concept that sometimes it's, you know, not that bad or it's cool to do. I mean, in a lot of states, you know, it's legal. And um, so it doesn't have as much of a stigma, I think, as other drugs do or being an alcoholic does. But, you know, you're bringing up this THC-induced psychosis. So there is a real big damage to your physical and mental health. Um, when people are starting to display signs of this psychosis, Bart, do you know what some of the symptoms are? Well, it's basically lost, uh, they lose, they lose the touch with reality. They lose touch with reality. So if they, so if you, let's say you're talking to them and then they say something that doesn't make any sense, um, that, that, you know, you know, can be the start of, uh, of a psych psychotic break. The other thing is they're paranoid. Uh, paranoia is very common. I remember, I don't think I had a, I, I'm pretty sure I never had a full psychotic break when I was uh, smoking uh, marijuana in, in the 70s. Um, 
However, I definitely had paranoia. Mm. So if someone's getting a lot of par- being paranoid a lot, um, then that's a precursor to, um, it can be a, a sign that they may be in close to psychotic brain. And is there a treatment for these symptoms? Besides, I, I guess the obvious treatment would be just to start backing off and quitting THC. In addition to that, are there any treatments? Yes, I think it's just real important that people uh, reach out for support if they, uh, when they're trying to, trying to stop because uh, it's almost impossible to do it alone. Um, and uh, by getting the help of others, especially, again, people have already through programs where people have already uh, and also gone through that journey, they might be sober for a year, two years, five years, whatever, they can help them through. Um, but uh, if something, if someone does have a psychotic break, it's really very important to um, think about safety for that person and the people around them. Because unfortunately, people have gotten into cars and you know, killed other people or, or injured themselves or that type of thing. So it's important to call, if you have to, if you need to call 911. Um, yeah, okay. On the phone, I would just let them know, you know, that you know, it doesn't, you don't think they're in danger of hurting others, but you're not sure and you're just trying to be safe. If you, if, and uh, just totally be honest and let them know that, you know, obviously they don't have a weapon. Make sure that you let them know because you don't want the SWAT team to come. But it is important to think about uh, their safety and, and your safety. Absolutely. And after symptoms are addressed, and let's say, uh, you know, that's a very scary situation to think about, does this psychosis, you know, does it cause any permanent damage to the human brain? So, unfortunately, that can um, cause permanent damage. However, um, in a lot of cases, especially if it's just happened, once or twice, uh, from what I've heard, the right uh, treatments as far as you know, tr- seeing a psychiatrist um, and having you know medical care and all that, uh, and if people get stopped using um, uh, THC, then uh, from what I've heard, uh, or people can either get all the way to the back or all the way back. Mm, okay. You know, we were talking the other day, uh, having a great conversation. You and I um, just flowed so naturally. I think we're both so passionate about addiction and helping others break that cycle. And uh, we got on the topic of, uh, you know, big marijuana and the pharmacies and the the people that work there. Um, And we were discussing, because it was, to me, such a shock. So to to be a uh, quote-unquote a bud tender, right? A bud tender is someone that works at a dispensary. Right. Uh, what was the age they need to be? Well, well, first they don't need a license, right, or any kind of course. Where so I'm going to compare this to a bartender. I live in Texas. I'm in Houston. To be a bartender, you have to be at least 18 years of age, and you have to get a certification from TABC, which is probably different in each state. But for Texas, it's TABC. And so you and I were talking the other day and making a comparison that I don't. They don't need any kind of special license or education or anything like that to work as a bud tender. Can, can you expand on that for me? Sure. So I don't know the, the regulations in every single state. Um, however, in general, from what I've heard, I think to be a bud tender, you have to be 21, and you have to, I think, have a driver's license um, or some type of, um, you know, what's called a, the identity, the you know, uh, personal identification card, make sure you're who you are. Um, and then if there are any they were put together, again, from everything I've heard, from the cannabis lobby, the marijuana lobby. So it's not objective. It's all on their side. So just to give you an example, they did a big survey, and women pretended like they were pregnant, and they called up to the Colorado dispensary, and they said, I'm pregnant, I'm having morning sickness, what do you recommend? About 70% of the bud tenders recommended uh, cannabis with THC for the pregnant women. And it's been proven over and over, and over scientifically that it's bad for the fetus. Mm-hmm. Because the, the 
it's a bad drug to introduce to the fetus. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so kind of like in the days back in Big Tobacco where they used to quote-unquote prescribe cigarettes basically for a lot of ailments. Exactly. Even asthma, they had an asthma cigarette back then. Asthma and, uh, cigarettes. Oh, my goodness. Seriously. text to, uh, to look at. Um, it's a group of doctors, and they've done a lot of research, peer-reviewed research on uh, cannabis with the THC, and so it's um, Isaac, and it's IASIC1.org, which again, you can put that in the text, but uh, they have a fantastic online library, all peer-reviewed research, and all the summaries of all the research are, um, even I can understand them. So they're in layman mm-hmm. form, um, easy to understand summaries. And okay. so to me, they're a group of PhDs who've done the research versus a bud tender who usually smokes themselves or uses themselves, vapes themselves, and is 21, but is not a doctor, not a pharmacist, but many times is giving out medical information or medical advice when you know, they don't, they don't, they're not qualified. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they're very nice people, but they're just not, you know, I don't go, I don't go to the gas station and ask somebody at the gas station for medical advice. Call me crazy. No, definitely. It's a really good resource that you just shared with us. Um, How long? About what? CHS. Yes. Yes. So the, the, uh, psych and. The, what were we, the THC-induced psychosis, CHS. So, cannabis-induced psychosis, okay, is, is one thing. And then there's something called uh, CHS. That's a long, it's a long term. Okay, cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. Okay. Don't try to say that, don't try to say that fast five times. I, okay, um, well, if you can repeat it one more time, I'll make sure that I drop that term in the show notes as well, please. Okay, cannabinoid. Okay. And I can you know, t- type it up for you somewhere. Um, so what that is, is where the person is using you know, usually uh, cannabis with high THC, um, and they use it, have used it for quite a long time. And a lot of, I don't know exactly know why, but a lot of times I think it is people who are under 25 or younger, so maybe it triggers something in the brain. Um, anyway, they can't, it's really hard for them to stop uh, vomiting. They vomit over and over and over, and they um, oh, no. end up becoming extremely hydrated and dehydrated. And if you have anyone like that, and you especially know that they, uh, if you're not sure, of course, I would call, you know, uh, an ambulance right away. But um, many times it's it's this thing called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. You can Google it. it uh, even if you Google CHS, you'll, you'll get to that term. And there's over 20,000 members the CHS recovery uh, private Facebook page mm-hmm. with 20,000 members. And um, so another term you can go Google is vomiting because sometimes they scream as they vomit. They're so frustrated because they can't stop vomiting, they scream. So the word is scromiting. 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 So if you Google scromiting, and, and there's a lot of emergency room doctors and nurses I can tell you all about it. Um, and they just, at first, they didn't know what it was. And um, a lot of the doctors and nurses didn't know what it was. And when they would ask the patient or ask the parent, you know, do they do drugs, whatever? Oh, yeah, they do, they do marijuana or cannabis. But, you know, the doctors and nurses would go, oh, that, they, that can't cause it. And now it's, it's again, proven that it can cause it. And it's actually very prevalent. Oh, my gosh. That sounds awful. Really bad. And actually, a couple people have died from it because of the extreme dehydration. Mm-hmm. Uh, their kidneys give out. That's a, that's unusual. But but there's if you go to this uh, private Facebook page, so and you, and you may have to spell it out. But if not C H S uh, recovery, um, you will read story after story after story, post after post, and it's really terrible. And I thought I was being smart, um, and I said, oh, just stop using the THC, and then someone uh, corrected me and said, actually, once you get CHS, 
you have to stock all cannabis products, even CBD. Oh, even CBD. Interesting, because I was going to ask you about that too. Um, if you know, you know, if there is a big difference between CBD vapes and THC vapes, um, from what I know it is basically THC is um, what you have when you have a, a whole marijuana plant or something like that. And then with CBD, they extract the, what they need from it, but they leave the THC out. And so CBD is so prevalent right now. You can smoke it, you can get gummies, you can get all kinds of things. And um, yeah, let me, let's hear your, your take on CBD. Okay, yeah, good question. I used to think CBD was totally harmless. There are, uh, have been some studies that show uh, liver damage. So again, you have to be careful, because um, it's, it's funny, when I talk to people here, especially in California, they seem like they have a PhD in CBD or a PhD in THC research. They talk like that, they say, oh, CBD is all good, uh, you know, perfect. It's a great thing. However, um, you know, it's it's not uh, like broccoli. It just isn't. You know, it's it's good. It's nice to think it, and it doesn't really get you high like THC. But almost, it's very difficult and expensive to get all the THC out of um, cannabis. And so, uh, you know, depending on you know where it comes from. Um, it usually has at least some CHP in it, not, not necessarily enough to get you high. However, um, you know, some people are more susceptible to the CHP than others, so maybe even just a little bit um, can be a problem. Mm -hmm. So I would just um, again, talk to, like, I would actually go to that website, um, I think it's one.org, and, um, and get in touch with a, a doctor that really knows about the CBT and um, Contact them because um, it's kind of like the Wild West. It's like, again, probably like, like 100 years ago when people go, tobacco is all good. Oh, you're, you're absolutely right. It is like the Wild West right now when it comes to THC dispensaries and when it comes to vape stores. And um, it, it's absolutely like the Wild West. So it's great that there are those resources that you're telling the audience about right now because what I'm always encouraging my listeners to do is the very first step in quitting is just to get very curious about what you're addicted to in the first place. Exactly. I, again, like I said, I used to think it was harmless. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and unfortunately, I found out the hard way. And I know that my son's situation is extreme, but I know of about 50, just myself, I know about 50 situations that are very similar. And um, unfortunately, in Colorado, study, this is from the Department of Health in Colorado, they did a study uh, a, couple, a couple years ago, and 32% uh, of 15 to 19 year olds that died by suicide, 32% uh, had THC in their blood. Oh my gosh, 32%, that's huge. Yeah, so it was the most uh, by far, I think the next one down was 10%. I forget either alcohol or antidepressants mm. or something like that, but by far the most at 32% was THC. So, again, that's a huge was, percentage. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I think you're right, education's number one. Mm -hmm. And um, the more people we get educated, the better. And I appreciate all of the knowledge that you're sharing with us. When I created this podcast, I'm I'm always trying to come from a place of service and to enlighten, not lecture. And right. I feel like you're enlightening so many facts around THC right now that I for sure didn't know until our conversation the other day. And um, and with uh, with your Marinon group, do you have a, a big goal for it? Well, um, because it's a uh, kind of a basically a uh, team teamwork type organization, and none of us get paid. We're all volunteer. Um, and just like again, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, you eventually get a sponsor, you work 12 steps. It's not a religious organization. Um, however, uh, most people actually, if not at the beginning, uh, start to believe in a, a power greater than themselves. So, so for some people, it's nature. For other people, they, they call the power greater than themselves. 
or the power of God. So it, it, we're not. Uh, we just want to make sure that we are open to as many people as possible. Some people even join and they're atheists, right? mm. and eventually they come around. Uh, most recently, that at least there's a power greater than themselves, and um, and so that's one of, we all, one of our main sayings is take what you like and leave the rest. So if you come to a meeting and some of the stuff doesn't make sense or you don't agree with some of it, um, then I'm so glad that that support is out there for everybody listening. If you find yourself battling with THC and you need support yourself, you definitely have the resources to do it now. Or if you are just a concerned friend or a loved one of someone who is using THC and you need support, we've got Mr. Bart Bright here from Maranon to help us out and spread the word. Um, before we wrap up, Bart, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience? Oh, sure. Um, I think, okay, I, I, thought, I wish I had known, um, you know, when my son was young, like 15, and, and even young, younger, I, I wish I had known all this stuff. And yeah. You know, I didn't. And I thought, oh, I guess this is a rite of passage. You know, I did it. Um, I didn't do it that young, but I, I did it. In college and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important that people learn as much as they can about it. And they can contact me through Maranon. I, I jump to you it. You can give my uh, email address out if, if, if that's what that's okay with you. Um, because it's, I wish I had known. And, and if I could go back, I would have just educated my, my son that about the fact that, um, you know, that THC is a drug. You, there's even people out there that think it's not a drug. Exactly, is a drug, and it, and it is. It can be addictive, not for everybody, but for a lot of people. And I wish I'd known all those facts so that I could have, uh, you know, uh, educated them. Absolutely, and again, I'm just. It just kills me to hear your story about losing your son, um, and Thank you came. You. But you're trying to help as many people as you possibly can, and I just yeah, really uh, appreciate the good work that you're doing in the world. You're so welcome. Um, you mentioned a website. Is there anywhere else? Uh, let, let us know where, where can people find you. So, um, yeah, so you can email me. Uh, that's probably the easiest way. At Bart, B-A-R-T, J, Bright, B-R-I-G-H-T, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Bart J. Bright at gmail.com. Um, another website I'd like to give out if I can. Um, it's called Every Brain Matters. Org. Okay. Every brain, yeah, every brain org, and that has a lot of information, um, uh, in, in it, and also has uh, support meetings and educational meetings. I will definitely check that out. On this show specifically, I'm always talking about the brain and trying to be as science based as possible. Um, you know, one of the things I've done an entire episode on is um, how vaping basically hijacks the dopamine reward system in your brain and there's so much science backed data that that goes into everything that I love to talk about on the show I really really appreciate you coming on today um, please keep up the great work in the world um, I'd love to have you back on the show sometime and oh I have one more question uh, in addition to finding you if anyone wants to donate to Marinon uh, how would we be able to do that, Bart? So if you go to the maranon.com, M-A-R-I-N-O-N.com, mm -hmm. uh, or, or email me. Either way, um, and you'll see on the website that there's a, a place to connect to uh, and sign up. Then you can go ahead and do that. And we don't, we don't share your information. Uh, it's all uh, you know, private. Fantastic. So for my listeners out there, let's break it down and really think about how much one vape will cost. Um, I know for me, back when I was vaping, if I went around the corner to the corner store or something like that, I think a basic vape, a disposable, was maybe $20. So in your mind, if you can trade that vape for $20, and please go over to the Marinon site with Bart and donate that $20 instead of buying one vape. Let's help a lot of people out there. Wow, thanks a lot, Tim. You're welcome. 
Thank you so much again for coming on, and I will see you sometime in the future. Good. Thanks for having me. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.